Namaskaram everyone. In this video we shall be talking about the latest update by the American Academy of Neurology given in 2021 for a very important topic. It is for the guidelines for the withdrawal of anti seizure medication in patients who are seizure free for long. And this is very important especially for pediatricians because we see a number of patients with epilepsy or other diagnoses like neurocystic sarcosis, tuberculoma etc. who have been seizure free for some duration and we want to taper medications but we aren't in a fix as to when and how. So why was the need? The need is that because there are no established guidelines for this purpose in adults as well as children and the reason is that even in well controlled epilepsy patients relapse can occur in around 23.7% of cases that is why everyone has to exercise great caution whenever trying to withdraw anti-seizure medications in patients who are seizure free. Actually there are two important issues which a pediatrician has to confront. The first issue is time. That is when should one start tapering anti-seizure medications. This is again because the risk of relapse is very high. And the second important issue is how you should taper. That is what should be the modality of tapering this anti-seizure medication. Traditional teaching like in our PGs in KG and many of the studies also have suggested that a minimum seizure free period of 2 years is required before you think of withdrawing anti-seizure medications or tapering them. But the decision ultimately rests with the treating clinician. Like in practice I have seen that many pediatricians start tapering when the patient is seizure free for around 1 year or sometimes even 18 months and some they don't start tapering even up till 3 years of seizure free duration. Also there is no consensus on the mode of withdrawal. So modality of withdrawal can be slow that is spread over 3 months that is beyond more than 3 months to up to 2 years or it can be rapid that is tapering is done within a duration of less than 3 months. A higher relapse rate is observed in patients receiving polytherapy versus monotherapy with anti seizure medications at the time of withdrawal and this might also be influenced by two other factors that is a higher age at seizure onset in patients receiving polytherapy and a longer duration of epilepsy before these patients are put onto anti seizure medications and they receive polytherapy. Therefore, a practical approach is a slow and steady withdrawal in patients who are receiving polytherapy. So in summary, we see there are three important issues. The time, when you should start tapering, the mode, how slowly or how fast should you taper and the number of drugs. If the patient is on several anti-epileptic drugs versus a patient is on single anti-epileptic drug. There are certain factors which increase the risk of rec recurrence. These can be patient related factors like abnormal CNS examination, global developmental delay or intellectual disability and neonatal or adolescent onset seizures. All these three conditions pose the patient to an increased risk of recurrence. Then symptomatic epilepsies, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and juvenile absence epilepsy. These also predispose the patient to increased risk of recurrence. Certain EEG patterns like epileptic form patterns on EEG before or after anti seizure medication withdrawal, focal slowing or paroxysmal abnormalities on EEG, and interictal epileptic form activity, they also predispose to recurrence, increased risk of recurrence. And therefore, these seizure these EEG patterns basically help in identifying the seizure etiology and also help in prognosticating for future relapses. Then there are certain therapy related factors like polytherapy versus monotherapy which we had already discussed previously and certain neuroimaging findings if they continue to persist even when the patient is seizure free for a certain duration of time. But certain factors like cryptogenic or idiopathic epilepsies and benign epilepsies like benign epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes are not associated with an increased risk of recurrence. Now coming on to the important recommendations given by the AAN 2021 update 
as far as the duration of seizure free period is concerned it has been found that there is no significant difference when tapering anti seizure medications at 2 years versus 4 years of seizure free period and that there is insufficient evidence to comment on the risk of relapse when tapering anti seizure medications at 18 versus 24 months of seizure free period therefore the current and the final recommendation as of now is a 2 year seizure free period to be considered before contemplating to taper anti epileptic drugs as regards the various electroclinical syndromes for example west syndrome dravet syndrome lennox gastaut syndrome aan 2021 says that clinicians must know the natural history of these syndromes whenever they are counseling parents regarding withdrawal of anti seizure medications now as regards abnormal eeg on anti seizure medication withdrawal the aan 2021 says that in children with a seizure free period of at least 18 to 24 months an eeg should first be ordered before attempting to withdraw asms and there is insufficient evidence to suggest the type and the length of eeg which is required to predict seizure recurrence that is sleep versus awake record then there is insufficient evidence to refute or support informing parents of an increased risk of relapse in patients with a documented seizure etiology regarding the risk of status epilepticus or sudden unexpected death in epilepsy after anti seizure medication withdrawal aan suggests that clinicians should counsel that the recurrent seizures may place the children at risk of status epilepticus and sudden unexpected death but an increased risk of the same is not associated with anti seizure medication withdrawal per se and finally as regards the rate of anti seizure medication withdrawal it is seen that there is no significant difference when you withdraw drugs at the rate of 25% dose every 10 to 14 days versus 25% every 2 months and therefore children who are seizure free for at least 24 months the withdrawal of anti seizure medication should be done at the rate of 25% every 10 to 14 days and this is the final recommendation given by AAN 2021 so summarizing the five key updates first a 2 year seizure free period should be there before contemplating to taper anti seizure medications second one must know and counsel about the natural history of electroclinical syndromes which may sometimes be associated with recurrence of seizures after withdrawing anti seizure medications one must consider doing an eeg before tapering anti seizure medications after a seizure free period of around 18 to 24 months and preferably not before that an increased risk of relapse and sudden death in epilepsy is not associated with withdrawal of anti seizure medications per se one must be able to counsel the parents and finally anti seizure medications must be tapered at the rate of 25% of the dose every 10 to 14 days So these were the major updates given by the American Academy of Neurology 2021. Thank you so much for a patient watching and please do share the knowledge. Thanks a lot.